Thank you very much, President Jackson, uh, honored guests and students and their families. Uh, good morning. Uh, at talks at commencements are supposed to provide words of wisdom for graduating students to help them in their future lives. I have a little problem with this. <laughs> My work is lack of wisdom, I would say. My work as a theoretical physicist uh, doesn't give me much help. Uh, in my work, I have to deal with time scales so short that a particle moving at the speed of light can't get out of an atomic nucleus in which it's created, doesn't have time. And time scales as so long that we look back to the beginning of the Big Bang. 13.7 billion <clears throat> years ago. Uh, what can a physicist like me have to say to young men and women who are graduating and are naturally worried about what will happen to them in the next few years? A mere 10 to the eighth seconds. <laughs> well, there is one thing. Scientists and engineers and architects in their work often have an experience that is deeply enlightening, almost ennobling, and is not granted to everyone. It's the experience of finding that you have been wrong about something, not just of being wrong, but of learning conclusively and inescapably that you have been wrong. It's not that our moral standard is so high compared to other people. It is that rather the analytic ability to do calculations and then carry out observations allows us to check our ideas as we go along and often learn that they are wrong in a way that we can't evade. Here's one example. When I was a graduate student, I learned of a proposal by two senior physicists, Tsung Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang, that the fundamental symmetry of the laws of nature between left and right was only approximate. Now, with all the wisdom of my two years of graduate school, I thought that this was absurd. Everyone knew that although many things distinguish left and right, like the way we print books in English, or the, way, the rules for driving cars on highways, the laws of nature don't make this distinction. It had never, no distinction between left and right had ever been observed in nuclear or atomic physics. Then shortly after the theoretical proposal by Li and Yang, experiments showed that particles called neutrinos always spin to the left like this never to the right like this. It was not necessary to argue about the issue. This showed inescapably, immediately, obviously, that I had been wrong. I suppose that engineers and architects have similar experiences when their calculations show inescapably that some bright idea won't work or when something crashes like the collapse of the Seattle-Tacoma Bridge. Of, of course, you hope it doesn't get to that. It's profoundly instructive to learn that one has been wrong about something. It combats arrogance and opens the mind to new ideas. Over the centuries, the world has been greatly damaged by political and religious leaders who were sure that they knew the truth or behaved as if they did and were able to pass on this certainty to their followers. And this is not at an end, as you can tell these days by looking at any daily newspaper. So my message to graduating students, for the world's sake as well as for your own, is that when you go forth and get things wrong, as you inevitably will, to be willing to recognize that you've been wrong and even be a little proud that as scientists or architects or engineers, 
You have the analytic skills to know that you were wrong. Thank you.